Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Moment with Miranda. I'm coming to you live tonight on Friday, the 30th of August. Unbelievable. Um, tonight I am in Bristol, Indiana at my brother Reese's house. I'm here with my mom. Um, we're watching my nephews for a couple of days and actually I fly back down to Georgia tomorrow to uh, meet back up with the Tharps. And get back on the road with them. Um, I've had a great time these last couple of weeks. Been in and out of Pennsylvania at my mom and dad's. Um, you know, I was in Oregon last week. Um, been with the Tharps in Ohio and they were ministering as well as myself in Pennsylvania. So it's just been busy the last couple of weeks. Um, but tonight I am in Indiana and I'm really excited to get to spend time with all three of my nephews. My nephew Judah came as well, which is really awesome. You guys know my story, so you know I don't very often get to spend family time. And it's really been a blessing to me. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to capture these moments with my family. Um, the Tharps and I are going to be... Uh, at the Tabernacle in Gadsden, Alabama this coming Sunday. We're really looking forward to seeing you folks um, getting to minister and just um, the Tabernacle has always been close to the Tharps heart and ever since I've been with them you can't help but love the people there so we're really excited to be with you guys on Sunday morning and Sunday night September the 1st so be looking for us there. But tonight I want to share just a few minutes um, for, with my moment with Miranda on the idea of living here on your way to there. Now the book of Hebrews in chapter 12, it reads like this. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, I really love um, this this verse and that first part looking unto Jesus. You know, chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews comes right off of that great hall of faith that we like to talk about. Um, it preaches really good. It's an exciting chapter, chapter 11. And it gives us just the stories of all of these great people of God who believed God and just walked out his purposes and processes in their life, you know, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, Noah, even Rahab, the harlot. She's in the hall of faith, which to me is so very awesome. And they're just wonderful examples of what it means to live a life well, to live a life of faith, and just to finish the race that they were set on. And when you and I begin following Jesus, we begin that same journey of faith. And the longer that you live, you know as well as I do that it's not a sprint. It is certainly not a jog. Um, it definitely is more like a marathon where day by day we just walk it out. We just keep on this journey. It's a daily journey called life. And you know, I've shared with you many times that I'm really into running um, over these last, probably this last year. And as I've uh, really dove into running, I've recognized that the race isn't so much with anybody else as much as it's with myself. You know, I have my own pace. I have my own course. I have my own breath that I take. If I try to keep pace with those around me, I get too tired. I lose my, my step, I lose my pace. If I try to run a course that I don't know, I get lost. Um, recently, last week, when my mom and I were in Oregon at the ladies' conference out there, we went for a little walk one afternoon. It ended up being a seven mile hike because we got lost. We were on a course that we didn't necessarily know. You know, as I run, if I try to run faster than what my course calls for, I run out of breath and I can't finish the intended purpose that I had. I gas myself. I get too tired. See, much of running is competing with your own mind. It's recognizing where your weaknesses are and the mindsets and the distractions that tend to throw you off and just pushing through those things in order to accomplish the goal one step at a time. 
I have found for myself that I can talk myself out of a run before I even get there. I can be on the way driving to it and think, oh, I'm too tired. I can't, I can't do it. And I won't even want to start. But, but before I even get there, I can talk myself out of finishing it before I've even made one step in forward progress of the run. I can make a run longer and harder simply by focusing on the climbs of the course that I know are ahead rather than where I am at the present moment. Now, recently, my older brother Jed and I, we went for a run in a, in a park that's close to where my mom and dad live. And he and I were just running and we were talking. And as we got started on the course, we knew that the park is about four miles. So we were determined we were gonna run those four miles. And I also knew that there were hills throughout the course. And Jed said something that I've often thought about. He said, we're not there yet, speaking of the hills. So let's focus on here. Because if I get so focused on the there, I'll get tired while I'm here. I'll lose heart while I'm here. I'll lose the present. I'll lose the gift that the present offers me. See, I've discovered the importance of every step in running, each moment, the pace of now, and it's being present in the here because we're not there yet. We don't have what we need for there yet. We're not ready for there yet. We're just not there we're here. And the same is so true in our Christian walk in this life of faith that you and I have been called to. You know, the writer of Hebrews encourages us, hey, we, we are compassed. We're surrounded by such this great cloud of witnesses who have been on this road before. They know what it's like. He says, be encouraged. Let's lay aside the hindrances. Let's lay aside the weights, the, the same mindsets that keep us in a rut, those obsessive thoughts that just keep us hemmed in. He said, let's lay aside those things and let's run with patience the race that has been set before us one step at a time you know when I'm so focused on there I miss out on here where I am he said let's look to Jesus because he's the author and the finisher of our faith and our culture is definitely one that constantly has us looking ahead um, we look to the better job the better house, the the better elusive thing. You know that thing where it just feels like there should be something better to life. And we end up on this journey of getting there. We have this mindset that once I get there, it's going to be better than where I am here. And it creates this dissatisfaction. And it either, depending on your personality, puts you into overdrive to try to achieve to get there or it will totally set you back and just make you do nothing because you figure nothing's going to change anyway, so why should I even try to get there? Both of these mindsets are thieves. They, they rob us of time here. They rob us with the illusion of there. And see, we've even adapted this mentality in church. If we're really honest with ourselves, we are ever chasing this elusive will of God that somehow he is withholding what he wants us to do. Or if we would just find what we're supposed to do, then we could actually start living. And, and even as preachers, we can be guilty of, of telling people, you know, that God has designed you specifically for a, a task. And we sometimes bypass all of the present moments of here, focusing on finding out what that one task is because bless God, that's what I'm designed to do. You know, when we send people out on this search for there and we miss the here and we become dissatisfied. And either we strive trying to find the there and aren't sure if we ever actually reach it or we never change and we just float through life thinking well I can't find the will of God anyway he must not have anything for me to do and we just become dissatisfied and disillusioned again the focus on there robs me of here where I am now and the fact that every day I can be doing God's will 
giving thanks, sharing Jesus, being a witness, being a light, just living in thankfulness each and every moment. Does anybody else ever look back at a week and think, where on earth did that week go? Like, I can't believe it's already another Friday and we're sharing another moment. Or have you ever thought, where in the world was I this week? What did I even do? I certainly have thought many times, where am I? I woke up yesterday morning thinking, I don't even know where I am right now because I'm constantly on the move. Or maybe you were so focused on getting there to the weekend or some anticipated event that you totally miss the here of life. See friends, our life doesn't happen there one day. Our life is now, here, in these steps, in these moments, at this pace. You know, and the, the most amazing part and the best part is that God is here too, now. And there are times that I don't even take the time to recognize God is here. You remember the story of Jacob in the book of Genesis where he's running from Esau after he's stolen his birthright and he's got the blessing from his father and he's running for his life because he's afraid. And he gets out of there. He gets out of there. He's thinking, I got to get to there because anywhere but here is better because who knows what Esau is going to do to me. And the fact was is that he came to a place where he laid down and he fell asleep and he had a dream. And in that dream, he realized something amazing, that God was there. He saw a ladder and he saw angels ascending and descending from heaven back down to the earth. And in this place where he's having a dream, in the here where he was at this moment, the God of heaven met him. And he said, I'm going to give you a land and I'm going to give you a seed. And he said, I want you to know that I'm with you wherever you go. I'll keep you in all the places that you go. And I will bring you into this land. For I will not leave you until I have done everything that I promised you that I would do. You see, as much as there was a there for Jacob and all of his seed, a land and a promise for Israel, there was a there. There was also a here too. God wanted Jacob to recognize, I'm here in this moment right now with you. There's a promise right here that I'm going to keep you here as well as there and on your journey to there. That was an awesome thought that God was with him. And all of a sudden, Jacob said, God's here. He's been here all along. And I never even knew it. I didn't recognize it. And he named that place Bethel, which means the house of God. You know, in the New Testament, we're told that we are the house of God that God has come to make his abode in us. And through the promise of the new covenant, he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. We have the promise that God is in our here, that although time to, from time to time we may look to there, God is here right now. And it was recognizing that God was in his here that Jacob was able to just continue walking to just have peace and to move forward. See, in the moments whenever I'm running and I wanna get ahead of where I am, I have to intentionally make myself focus on the present. And it takes determination. I'll tell myself, Miranda, listen to the sounds of nature. And I'll try to like calm my mind of thinking about whatever I'm thinking or looking ahead and I'll just listen to the birds. And I'll just hear them tweeting away or hear them just doo -doo 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 -doo, and they're just going about their life. They aren't worried about what they're gonna eat. They aren't worried if there's a predator that's gonna come after them. They aren't worried if they're gonna lose a feather. They just tweet. They just go on about their merry way. And then sometimes instead of listening to nature, I'll 
actually try to focus on it. I'll look around me. I'll see the beauty of the trees. I'll look and, and consider the fact that the flowers that are blooming, they don't worry. The trees that are growing, they don't worry. They just are. They just, they don't think about, am I going to have root rot and lose a branch? They don't think about, are all my leaves going to fall off and I'm going to be bald? They don't have that kind of worrying. They just are. They just exist. You know, it sounds a lot like what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 when he said, take no thought about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He said, don't even think about tomorrow because all of those things will take care of themselves. Just focus on here and seeking me and my kingdom and my righteousness. Make that your aim and all the other stuff is going to be added unto you. See, the, right, the writer of Hebrews in that second verse, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He was in the here when it started and it'll be here whenever it finishes. You see, our focus on him makes it possible for us to live our here as well as there. See, the dream at Bethel gave Jacob a focus that God was with him here in the present. And our focus on Jesus today gives us the assurance that he is here right now in this step, in this breath, at this pace. See, really the walk of faith isn't so elusive for all of us. We don't have to grasp at God's will. We don't have to grasp at being confident that he's walking with us. We don't have to wonder if we're actually ever going to get there because there is actually here and so is he. And that's an amazing thought. Every step, every breath, in every course. You know, friends, in this moment tonight, I wonder if we could just consider our here, this walk of faith, that today really is all that we have. It's this breath that I'm breathing right now is all that I'm guaranteed. It's my one life. Here is what I have. And we are surrounded by so many that walk here with us. And the truth is that we're all still walking one step at a time. We don't have to be distracted by all of the there's of life. That I can't wait till I get there. What's going to happen there? Is this going to be there? We don't have to be distracted by that. Because the truth is, is that God is here. Here in this moment, in this step, and he's walking it with us. So be encouraged tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that we can truly, truly live and hear on our way to there, Lord. I thank you that we really aren't promised anything beyond today. And I thank you that you're faithfully teaching each of us to just embrace every moment that we do have, to live unto you, to seek your kingdom, to seek to be a witness. More than that, just to look to Jesus because he's the one who started us on this journey and he's the one that will be with us every step and see it through to completion. Father, we thank you that truly, just like Jacob recognized, in this moment tonight, you are here. Your presence is here. And we can find rest and peace as we acknowledge that fact. Thank you for everything, Father, for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, thank you for joining me for this week's Moment with Miranda. I hope that you'll like the video and that you'll continue to share it. And hopefully you're just continued, you'll continue to be encouraged because that's the point of all of this. And the larger point is that I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And you know what? So do I. God bless you guys. Have a good night.